today I'm going to be walking you through a software called TLDR This. And this is another one of those AI summarization tools, but it has a couple like key features that are different from the other ones that I've previously talked about on this channel. This is the website here, and I'm going to have this link in the description below so you can easily access it. And if you just scroll down, you come to their like free version of their article summarization tool. And so you can just paste in the article in here, either through a URL or through actually pasting in the text if you can't access a URL. And you have a few different options down here. And so one of those options you can see here is to choose key sentences versus AI summaries. And so for your key sentences, this is actually going to allow it to pull specifically from the article what sentences it thinks are actually the important ones to include. Now, you can do as many key sentence summarizations as you want to do, but the AI summary, you actually need to be logged in and you only get so many of those before you have to go onto a paid plan. One thing I really like about the option of you actually choosing key sentences is that a lot of the other AI tools, like for example, Scholarcy, and if you haven't checked out my tutorial on Scholarcy, I will link it down below. But when I did my Scholarcy summarization of this exact same paper I'm gonna show you here, it was doing an AI summarization. So it was putting it in plain English, but it wasn't completely accurately picking up the information from the text correctly. So I remember it had one sentence like steroids are molecules like cocaine and ecstasy, I think, something like that. And that's just not even accurate. And so with Scholar C, I would re always recommend double checking that with the text. But here you can actually just say, give me the text. And so that way you don't have to constantly go back and double check, did this pull in accurately? And then you have options down here to do a short version or a detailed version, and it'll actually give it to you by section. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into this, and to start with what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to my first published paper. This is just one that I test a lot on, so it gives me a good way to compare between the different ones. And so I'm going to select the URL just up here, and if you are having issues finding which papers you should read or even coming up with your own research article ideas, check out my 30-day research jumpstart guide. It'll be available in a link in the description below. But I'm going to paste that article into this enter article URL. I'm going to choose key sentences and then we're just going to do short, concise and check that out. And I'm also going to say display important keywords so you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to do summarize this. And you can see it pulled in the table of contents figure here. So you can see that's the figure going on right here. It gave me the title, the author. It's only giving me the first author on this. There's actually three authors on this. The time that it was, or the day that it was published, it was published November of 2018. And then it has this time saved. It pulled in the key sentences, but it only pulled in the key sentences from the abstract here. So if I run it like this, or even if I go to give me a detailed and click summarize this, it's giving me the exact same summary. And that's because it only has the abstract to work with. So there's only one section available. So overall, this does give me a quick summary of the abstract, but oh, like the abstract was so small already, like maybe it saved me some time, which is probably why it says it saved me zero minutes. If you look here, time saves zero minutes because it's really not that much difference between the original versus this one. So if I wanted to actually give me a summary of the entire paper, I actually need to be able to have access to the PDF or the full text. And so this is the PDF pulled up here. I just got it from Google Scholar. So I can copy this PDF and I'm gonna run that one instead. So I'm gonna paste that in there and I'm gonna do short concise first and do summarize this. So now you can see that this is a little bit more robust. It's talking to me about the significance here. That's my first sentence is the significance. This is kind of a gap. Analysis is complicated by isomers. IMability has been previously shown promise in the rapid separation of steroid isomer. So it's bringing in the IM mobility here. This is bringing in the specific type of IM mobility I used, which is TWIMS. 
And here's a main sentence for the results. So metal adducted dimers enabled enhanced separation of steroid isomers compared to the corresponding monomers or sodiated dimers previously reported. So this is basically the impact of this paper is that these metal adducted dimers enhance the separation of these steroids. And then it says a calibration curve was fit. So this is coming from the method section, which is a little weird why it's down here. And then it specifically decided to pull out this corticosterone and 11-deoxycortisol to tell me about that. So I kind of like the intro it pulled. I don't think I did a good job of pulling the results for at least the concise summary. So I'm going to come back up and I'm going to do a detailed section wise and summarize this. So here we have the more detailed, we can see that it says time saved was seven minutes here. And so we have our introduction here. So this is mainly pulling in the main points of the introduction, important biomolecular class. So this is significance here. We have a little bit of lit review here, basically saying how twins compares to fames. So this is again talking about how is IMS in combination with other methods. So this is LC and MS. And then we're getting back into talking about the different literature that's been done previous to this. And then we have my main sentence introducing this, which is this is going to show twins for seven pairs of steroid isomer as an alkali metal adduct. So overall, this is decently good. I don't know what I would have necessarily included in here that isn't included in there. I think maybe a little bit more information on IMS might have been good to have, but overall this is pretty good for, for a detailed of the introduction. And then you can see that it actually pulled my three different sections from my methods. So let me show you what it's pulling here. So you can see I have experimental solution preparation. So it pulled that in as one, eye mobility mass spectrometry, and then CCS calibration and resolution. So that's what it's pulling in there. And this, it looks like it literally just gave me the entire section. This, it took out some of the like more specific information in there, but it gave me the, the majority of it. It's not telling me as much where things are coming from, but it gave me the majority of the information I need. And then collision cross sections. Yeah, I mean, overall, this is kind of the synced version of it. And then it's jumping into the results here, and it does actually separate it out. So you can see I have lithium steroid deduction, sodium potassium, and that's what we're following here. So overall, this is just basically telling me that lithiated dimers separated out well are good. And then it picked the one pair out that was only baseline separated as a lithium adduct. So that's like important to know. I kind of wish it would have given me like the resolutions of all the others, but I don't even know if I included that within this section. Yeah, no, I didn't. So that's, I mean, that's honestly my bad, not even their bad. So this is giving me a little bit more information on the specific pairs as well. I, I think it did a good job there. So yeah, this, how long is that section when I looked at it? Oh, so this was a decently long section. And it, I think this summarized it very well with what was going on is basically that there was at least one dimer species that was separated at above 1.0 and higher resolutions were seen for these. Yeah, I mean, that did a really good job there. We see, yeah, it pulled in what I want, what I was looking for it to pull in, which is the average error. Um, the one thing it didn't pull in is I think I have another section just like this that's saying the average error for the dimers. And so I think it missed that sentence, but overall it's not bad. So overall with this, what I will say is this overall did a good job. It missed a couple key sentences that I would have thought it would have pulled in, but overall, I mean, you're doing an AI software, right? Like I'm a human who wrote the paper being like, what's important? I think it did a really good job. When is the best time to use something like this? And I will do another video talking about a few of the other features of TLDR this, but specifically for this feature of it, I would say that I definitely like its detailed summary. I think for its short, concise summary, I would go to Paper Digest. I'll leave a link to that tutorial below if you're interested in it. If you just wanna get what are the quick facts of this paper, what's the impact it made, go to Paper Digest. I don't think TLDR This is doing that awesome of a job on the short, concise. 
I do think it's doing an amazing job on the detailed section wise though. So I would almost, if I want exact what's going on, I would come to TLDR this before I would do Scholar C. And TLDR this also has a Chrome extension and I'll do another video talking about its Chrome extension. But this is definitely something that if you just want what is the section wise summary of what's going on in each section, this is probably the one that I would come to over any of the other ones. So I hope that that's helpful to get you started. If you want to check out a better short concise, check out the Paper Digest tutorial right here, or you can check out the Scholar C tutorial over here. If this video is helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more videos on how to become a more efficient researcher, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.